Welcome to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, show six. In our last episode, we talked all about testing your business idea and making sales. On today's show, we're covering an important topic, investing in yourself and your business. Welcome to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, where we bring you real life strategies on starting and growing a business and finding financial freedom without sacrificing the life you have with your loved ones. We are your hosts, Tom and Ariana Sylvester, and we are married, we're parents, and we're serial entrepreneurs. This podcast is for those who want more out of life. We'll show you how to take the vision you have and create the business that will help you achieve it. Join us as we share practical steps, real life stories, and help you become a lifestyle builder. All right, welcome back to the podcast, and I'll tell you that this topic that we're we're talking about today is one that I think is very important. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I probably say that all the time. Yeah. But um it's you it's do. one that I think has really changed. I know not just, you know, myself and our businesses, but I know it's been a big one for you. Yeah. And so that's really talking about um, you know, investing in yourself and one of the best ways that I've found to do that is going to conferences. And I actually as the time of recording this, I have a couple conferences that I'm going to, there's some that we're going to. But what a lot of people don't know was that you actually never liked going to conferences and you had nope. never been to one nope. even after we started our first two businesses. Yep. And so I had to, I would say drag, I had to probably drag you to that first conference. Uh, let's talk about why you had to drag. Oh, man. We had just had a, a baby and he was only four <laughs> months old. Oh, this was actually, oh yes it was. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, I remember well. Well, and you were still breastfeeding. I was still breastfeeding. <laughs> so I remember we like we were traveling down and you were like, on the plane and did you have to go in the bathroom on the plane yes or, yeah yep. <laughs> so well, my my um sorry i'm kicking the cat away from all the cords underneath the table my breast pump was so loud and awkward sounding that i didn't want to like just sit on the plane and it, start pumping well i remember it sounded like a duck so it, it was sounded like, like quack, a duck quack. quacking yep. <laughs> so yep. like it doesn't like super awkward and even at the conference i remember some of the people were like talking yep. about because you were pumping well, in the I bathroom had, there was one we went to a location like a restaurant or something and they didn't have like a private bathroom it was a regular open bathroom with stalls so i was like huh where am i gonna go to pump hmm. <laughs> all right well everyone you're gonna hear a duck quacking very shortly well, I, I gotta tell you i give you kudos for trusting me with that and going and since then we've gone to a bunch of other conferences yes. and like this really ties into what we're talking about today which is really investing in yourself and in your business for growth yeah yeah, I think um, it changed it changed the game for me a little bit, like meeting real people who were doing the stuff that you had only talked about before and then, you know, seeing how it's different for everybody and, you know, kind of how we could make it our own and how we could use those people to lean on and, and to have our own little network of people who understood where who what we were going through. Yeah, well, and, and I mean, you know, I always come back to this quote, you know, you're the sum of the five people that you hang around with most. And when a lot of us go from this traditional path of like working a job and kind of, you know, what most people are on to shifting into like, I want more out of life or, you know, I want to start a business. What you tend to find is that the people around you aren't on the same trajectory and they oftentimes don't understand. And so one going to conferences is one of the ways where you can get around other like-minded people and not learn, not only learn, but also like get inspired yeah. and, and know that this is possible because as we talked about in, what was it, show four, like kind of yeah, your mindset, this is a journey and it's an emotional journey on top of everything else. And investing in yourself and being able to do those things gives you the confidence, the skills, the knowledge, and the support so that you can actually be successful with this. Well, and I mean, th- let's talk about some of the other ways because it's conferences and live events aren't the only way. Yeah, and it might not even be a good way to start. Yeah, yeah, well, and I think it's it's a little overwhelming and scary to jump right into going to a conference um, as your first investment in yourself. For a lot of people, I know a lot of people online are introverts and it's a little bit scary to go to something by yourself where you don't know anybody and just start going up to random people and start talking to them and you know like that can be really it can be tough and I'm someone who I'm I'm okay with talking to new people even though I used to be a little bit introverted but even for me sometimes it's overwhelming and I've been to many of them yeah so I know for people that haven't ever gone before that can be a tough way to jump in 
into the investment in yourself. Well, I was going to say, so let's take a step back and just talk about, you know, early on when you're just getting started, like maybe you just realized that, you know, you're really looking for more and you're thinking about starting a business. Let's talk about maybe how you get started. And then as you progress, maybe what some of those different investments look like. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're first getting started, some of the easiest ways to invest in yourself are to do what a lot of people like you do. You go and buy books that help you develop skills that you want to learn yep. or to kind of help you deal with those mindset demons and some of the things that are scary or you're unsure about, you can easily do some development around those just by reading books about it or listening to podcasts about it. Um, kind of going that free content route just to get you started. Yeah. And you know, or I low think, cost, I guess books aren't free. Yeah. Well, low cost are free, but um, you know, one of the biggest things people don't realize early on is when you just get started, the first thing you're looking for is like awareness. Yeah. So you just don't know what you don't know. And what you want to do is just get an understanding of like what's out there. What is this kind of new world or new thing that I'm looking at? And I want to kind of get an understanding of what that all looks like before I then figure out which path I go into and before I invest more. Mm hmm. So like, you know, people, if, if you listen to our first episode or you know our background, you know that I spent that $7,500 on training when I was early out and I didn't even have a business yet. I always say that like the $500 training I did was really good because it gave me awareness into all these different ways to invest in real estate. The advanced quote unquote training had like four different deeper dives into how to invest in real estate. Early on, you don't need those four deeper dives. You just need awareness. So like listening to podcasts like this, um, being in groups or forums of other entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, reading some of those books, those are all things that are really going to help you understand what is it that being an entrepreneur is about and what are some of the opportunities for you. And for people watching the video cast, you are having a very pleasant <laughs> view of Ariana Sorry. spraying our cat. <laughs> Because we have a new kitten that loves eating cords. No, he's on top of the television. What is wrong with this cat? Real life here, people. When you're shooting a podcast, sometimes you have to spray the cat. All right. Back to investing in yourself. But yeah, so early on, um, in, in there's a whole blog post that we have around here because a lot of people struggle with this. So you guys can find the link to that at the show notes page at tomandariana.com slash six. But um, early on, what you want to do is you don't want to spend a lot of money and you want to get that initial level of awareness. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it's different points of where you at are. Wow. Where you're <laughs> at while you're starting the business and while you're growing the business signal different times that it may be a chance to invest or like go up to the next level. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that we just talked about, you can do when you're starting out. But there are going to be points where you start to feel overwhelmed. So you may want to reach out and do the next level of investing into yourself and finding, you know, like a, a low cost paid community to join and surround yourself with people who can kind of help you out and lift you up, even though you're going through a roller coaster of emotions. Um, you might have had your business for a while and you're not seeing the success you want or you've hit a plateau. That's another good indicator that it might be time to invest in some help to invest in the next level of learning or skill set so that you can move your business along how you want it. Yeah. And an important part of that is looking at, you know, what do you need next? Um, how much time are you willing to commit and how much money are you willing to commit? You know, generally early on, you don't want to be spending a lot of money. Yeah. Now that's not to say like, so for example, if you have been in corporate for a long time, you've done pretty well there. So, you know, you have maybe some money stashed away, but what you really need help with is that one-on-one -on -one guidance to take your corporate skills to then turn it into a business. You might want to go and hire a coach and that might be the best route for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're just getting started and maybe, maybe you have some debt, maybe you don't have a lot of money to invest into the business. That's where you want to look at those low cost or free options. And like you said, having a community that's maybe a low cost monthly membership is a good next step yeah. because it doesn't cost a lot of money. It gets you around other entrepreneurs, and then most communities have some level of training, and then hopefully, and this is where you guys would want to look too, they have some access to the owners and some customization for you. Yep. 
because that's one of the things is training's great, but what you're going to find is that you always have different circumstances and you want the ability to get some feedback on your ideas or your direction so that, you know, you maybe cut off some of those like bad paths that you would go down and not realize. Yeah. Well, and I mean, that's entirely why we created Lifestyle Builders in that format, because that's what we were seeing a lot of people are looking to invest in themselves, but they don't have a lot of money up front to go out and hire a coach for a private coaching contract. But they just want some help, you know, every once in a while. They just want to be able to put a question somewhere and have people answer it and give them some clarity and some guidance around what direction to go. So, I mean, that's really why we created Lifestyle Builders in the first place. But before we jump into that, let's talk about some of the different ways to invest and the benefits of them. Yeah, so we already hit on a couple, right? Yep. So we've got the podcast. We we've, snuck them in there randomly. We've got the books. <laughs> hey, that's that's what I do. We just go with the flow here, right? <laughs> um, you know, conferences are another good one. Um, coaching or even group coaching is another good one. Yep. So that's one of the, the main things that I focus on and offer is really like that one-on-one -on -one of that group coaching. Um, I tend to focus on usually the more advanced entrepreneurs, the ones that have their businesses going. But like I said, there might be some cases where maybe you don't have a business yet, but you have a lot of experiences or skills from something else that you just want to transition and use some of the business knowledge. Yeah. And there's also a lot of programs and courses that are very specific to certain skill sets. So um, you may know, uh, similar to me, I was not good at selling. So I went out and my first investment in anyone ever was actually in a sales coach. Yep. And so I knew, okay, I've got all these, I know about business and I know all these things, but I'm struggling with this one aspect of our business and growing. So I went out and found somebody who could help me with that uh, aspect of my skill set. And um, then it ended up turning into, I hired a mindset coach as well. So it was like, once I started investing myself, it, it kept going and I kept finding different ways to keep investing in myself and keep growing and keep learning. Well, I was gonna say, and you hit on a great point there that I, I just wanna make sure people are listening, are getting. Early on, you wanna, we talked about kind of getting that foundation. And when you're learning, you're trying to understand a little bit about a lot of different areas. So at that point, you can read different types of books and kind of get that foundation. But once you move beyond that, like one of my pet peeves is when people just keep reading books and they don't implement. So um, there's actually a blog post that I wrote about this that we'll put up on the show notes of page. Of course there is, right? There's a book <laughs> or a blog post for everything. <laughs> um, but so what I talked about in this blog post is when you are looking to learn or invest in yourself, it starts with what we always talk about, visioning and goal planning, figuring out what you want to achieve. But then you want to think about what do you have to do next? What's getting in the way or, you know, what do you need yeah. to learn? Or who do you need to be to make that happen? And then that's where you want to invest. So for you, you knew that sales was going to be an important thing, something that you needed some support with. So you went and got a sales coach, right? You started looking at sales training. So that's where I think for a lot of people, it's like early on, kind of get the whole spectrum, but as you start really growing, start to hone in and focus on those specific skills or the specific support to get to your next point. Yeah. Um, you know, another important thing that I think too is realizing when you want to maybe make some of these investments. Yeah. yeah. Right. So obviously at the very beginning, you're going to make some investments because you want to learn, but there's some other different points out there as well. Um, like one of the ones that I find for a lot of people is when you get stuck, mm -hmm. right? When you hit a plateau and when it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you seem to do, you can't get out of it or you can't get to the next level. It's like you hit that ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling. And um, I think we talked about it in one of the other episodes, like that book, What Got You Here Won't Get You There. When you kind of feel that way, that's where investing really makes a huge difference for you. Yeah. Well, and, I, and a lot of people get to a certain point in their business where they decide they want to make a change or make yeah. a shift, but they've already established this business and they aren't sure how to do that without completely erasing everything they've done up to this point. So that's another point where you might look at <clears throat> investing in somebody who maybe somebody who's already done what you've done or who's made the change you're looking to make. Um, maybe somebody who can just kind of take a, a look at your overall business and say, okay, make some shifts and then you should be able to move in that direction with less uh, friction. Um, and then, you know, also just people who want growth. Yeah. You know, I, I, a lot of people out there, they get comfortable, they get to that certain point and they're like, listen, I've got this good thing going and I just want to grow. I just want to scale it. 
that's really tough to do on your own sometimes because when you're very close to your business, you don't see the big picture and all of the things and all of the moving pieces that need to be slowly, gradually changed in order to grow in the direction that you want to grow. Yeah, and that's a great point. So like um, so I, like I said, I do a lot of one-on-one coaching or even some group coaching with people, and that's one of the biggest things for people. And I always tell them, I'm like, look, you don't need a coach, no. right? Nobody needs a coach. But if you're looking to do things faster, if you're looking for, um, you know, or some less, more... With less frustration. Yeah, like hiring a coach or even like hiring a mentor or finding a mentor. A consultant. Um, a consultant. Yeah, I mean, like I, once again, another blog post. But so I put like just this I'm massive blog post. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I put this massive blog post out there all around this because uh, for a lot of people, they're like, okay, maybe I've, maybe I bought the books. I've listened to the podcast. Maybe I've even gone to a conference. But when is it time for me to maybe get more of a one-on-one coach, or when when do I get a mentor, and how much should I be spending? And or where I do wanted, I find those people? Yeah, and I wanted to just take so much of that out of the equation, so that people knew what they were getting into and what they could benefit from. So we'll put that on the show notes page too. But it's like a ten thousand word blog post that walks through all of that. Like, what can you expect to pay? How do you find them? What's the difference between? a mentor and a coach um do you need a consultant maybe instead of a a coach or do you maybe need a combination of them yeah or accountability or a mastermind or yeah there's so many so many different ways to invest in yourself and your business at different levels well and you know I, i think the other one too that often comes up when you get stuck or when you get overwhelmed or when you feel like or you've hit burnout because what tends to happen is we go through these ups and downs. And when you kind of up level and you get to that next level, you get a lot of momentum, things go well. But then you have to up level as the leader of your business. So there's some personal development. But then your business also has to have increased processes, yeah. better systems. You might either be hiring your first employee or maybe you're hiring for new roles and you're giving up some of your um, day-to-day responsibilities to work on the business. So... When you're getting stuck, too, oftentimes a podcast won't get you past that. Yeah. But working with somebody might. Yeah, and I think it's different. There's different levels of benefits for each of the things that we've talked about. Yeah. I mean, going with an actual person that you've hired to help you or you've joined a program or whatever that is often gives you so much clarity. uh, It gives you awareness. It gives you insights that you never would have had. Whereas sometimes you might just need to learn a skill. Yeah. So you're like, okay, I need to learn how to do this thing right here. You go out and you find the course that fits. It teaches you what you need to know. And the benefits of that are you knew exactly what you needed, what you wanted, and you can kind of look around until you find the thing that fits what you need. And you go and you just invest in that. And there's always different levels. You know, there's there's courses that are going to cost you thousands of dollars. There's courses that may only cost you hundreds of dollars. So depending on what you need you may be able to say, well, I don't really need that big one right now. I'm going to be good with just this little one. It'll get me started. It'll get me going. And then I can continue to work and develop that skill. Maybe I make more money and then I can go out and buy the higher priced course and really develop my skills even further. So, I mean, a lot of times if you're getting into a service-based business like uh, graphic design or web design and you don't have any experience in that, obviously you don't want to go and spend thousands of dollars right off the bat if you don't have thousands of dollars. Yep. So you might start small and just take somebody's little course on how to get started with WordPress. Correct. Then you get started. Maybe you make some websites for low cost for people. Then you go out and buy the next level course. So I think it's it's all dependent on your level, what you're looking for, and you can get so many benefits from investing big or small. Well, and, and to your point, like you hit on it, it's really about getting clear first. Like one of the biggest benefits that a lot of my coaching clients have is they get clarity. Mm. And oftentimes that clarity comes from having somebody ask you a question. And that's like, I find a lot of times we don't see our blind spots or we don't think deep enough, but when you have, it can be a coach, a mentor, it, when somebody asks you that and you got to think about it, you really get clear, then it makes investing a lot easier. Yeah. Um, And, you know, just some guidelines, because people often say, well, how much should I invest? You know, I'm at this point in my business. Here's just some guidelines for you guys. So at a minimum, I always like to say, if I make this investment, will I at least break even? Right. Will I at least get my money back? Um, And it doesn't always have to be about money. We'll talk about that in a second. 
but the really the sweet spot that I like to look for is if I make this investment, can this come back to me like two or three times? Mm -hmm. That's a good range. And what that's going to be is it's going to be like hitting singles or maybe doubles, right? We're not always making the giant investment for the home run, but you're making sure that you're always going to be a positive return. Yeah. And as entrepreneurs, that's what we're looking for. So it's, it's looking to say, you know, can I financially make this back? If I invest a thousand, can I make, can I at least get a thousand dollars back? But ideally, can I make two or three thousand? Yeah. Well, and to bring it off of money, a lot of times in the personal development space, there's not going to be an immediate monetary return on your investment. So when I hired a mindset coach, that had absolutely nothing to do with us making more money, at least not directly. Mm -hmm. What that had to do with was I hired a sales coach and then I figured out that I had some stuff going on in, oh, there's the animals again, <laughs> pets, everybody. I had some stuff going on in my own head that I had to get past before I could fully invest in the sales coach and the yeah. training that I was getting there. So for me, that that return on investment was, I got to get the stuff in my head straight before I can even get to the next level of learning, which will then get me to being able to sell more. Well, I was going to say, and you bring up such a great point there that, you know, oftentimes we'll look at the financial investment, but if you haven't done the work on yourself and if you don't have the right mindset, if you're not happy, you know, like if you haven't given yourself that space, a lot of the other investments you won't be able to maximize. Yep. So if you like that, like your mindset coaching sessions, like I could just see like the before and after, like right away, how much clarity you had, how much confidence you had and stuff that you weren't even aware of that was kind of causing blocks came mm -hmm. out. And then once you had that, you could take so much more advantage of the sales coaching and the other investments that you had made. But, but so for a lot of people, if you're making investments for one thing and they're not working, that'd be one of the things I'd say is take a look back and see, you know, is it really maybe, you know, your paradigm or your mindset or do you got to do some work on you first? Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like being on the airplane, right? Like they say, in the event of an emergency, if you're traveling with kids, which we like always are. <laughs> Put not your, always. Put you do not come to conferences with us. You're right. That's that's probably a good thing. <laughs> so much easier traveling without kids. But anyways, they say put your masks on first and then you know take care of others. It's the same thing here. You need to make sure that you're good and you've got a good mindset and you've got a good understanding and you're happy because then you're going to maximize every other investment that you make. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it's tough. It's tough to – some of the investments are going to cost more than you have or more than you feel you can put down. So you've got to find ways around that. Um, you can either find free information around those types of things. Obviously, um, the mindset coach that I hired, Heather Gray, has her own podcast. Yep. So I know a lot of people like to tune into her because that while they may not be able to pay for a private session, they're getting mindset coaching from her just by listening to the podcast. You know, you can go and look and say, oh, that's that's something that I feel like is a problem for me. You go and listen to that episode and you might get some of those aha moments without having to pay for a private coaching session. Maybe that then allows you to open up in your own business and do some things and get some money that you can then go and invest. Well, I was going to say, you make a really good point too. Um, when you go to hire somebody, especially if it's a coach or somebody that you're going to be working one-on-one -on -one with, you really want to make sure that they're the right person yep. and that you gel. And oftentimes people ask, well, how do I, how do I find a coach? How do a I know they're going to be the right one? Books it's or going podcasts and finding or blogs. Like you can go and just kind of get to know that person a little Absolutely. bit. Yep. And I mean, one of the things that I always do, I'll never take a client on without first doing a discovery call because I want to make sure I understand what they're doing. I'm going to help them get some clarity and then make sure we're right fit and that I can actually help, you know, because if that's not the case, then it doesn't make sense to work together because it's not going to be a positive experience for either of us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about quickly when investing in yourself doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know if I hear many people talk about that, but let's hit on that subject. Yeah. So the number one thing is when you're not clear. Like it all comes back to clarity. When you're not clear on what you want to achieve and what you have to do to make that happen. So, for example, when you hire a coach, the coach is not going to do things for you. Correct. Um, a coach slash consultant might give you some guidance, but you've got to be willing to do the work, mm -hmm. right? It's not just about the coaching call you have and then you forget about it till the next coaching call. It's about taking action first on yourself, but then also specifically on what you need to do. And it's all the in-between sessions that are ultimately going to make the success there. So if you're not willing to really invest and do your work, 
it doesn't matter how many courses you buy. If you're not going to complete them, it's not going to be valuable. Yeah. I think the other thing too is you've got to be open to change. You've got to be open to somebody coming in and asking you hard questions. You've got to be open to uh, maybe I'm doing things in a way that's not productive and I need to kind of shift my habits or shift the way I'm thinking. Because if you're not open to that learning, then the investments, like you said, aren't going to work. It's just like the implementation. If you're not open to the learning, the money you've spent on the investment isn't going to work. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about people being coachable. And that's the thing that I look at. You know, when I talk to this person, are they coachable? Do I think that when we work together, they'll be able to make these changes or not? And if not, I'll often tell them that you've got to go and do some of these other things first to be coachable so that you can maximize this investment. Yep. You know, and then I think one of the other problems that a lot of people have is that they they don't hire the right person yeah. or the right course. And that could be not hiring um, maybe the right role. Like maybe you need a consultant. You need somebody to come in and tell you what to do. But you hire a coach who's more going to focus on you and yeah. helping you get clarity. Right. Um, the other thing is this one people often don't think about you might not be investing the right amount. So sometimes I see people that are more advanced, like they're up-leveling their business, Mm -hmm. but they keep their investments the same as they were before. So like if, let's say... um, That's like the book you recommended in the Mindset episode. What got you here won't get you there. Absolutely. Same thing with the investments. Man, look at you. You're going to start recommending books soon. I can see it. I can't recommend books if I haven't read them. (laughs) This is true. So Ariana will recommend the same three books over and over. (laughs) But so what happens here is let's say $500 used to be a lot to you Mm -hmm. and you made an investment and then because of that you made sure it worked. Now your business is at a different level and you invest $500 again. You might not be as committed because the five hundred dollars, like doesn't you're like, well, if I don't do it, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you one, you don't want to overinvest, but you also don't want to underinvest. So um, a good guideline is you should take a portion of your revenue every year and invest it. And so if you go and do some research, it can be anywhere from three percent to ten percent. Mm-hmm. But so what that does is, as your business levels up, it makes sure that you allocate the right amount of money For you to, to level continue up. leveling up. Yep. Instead of just kind of staying stagnant. Yeah, I love it. All right, so let's talk about homework for today. Oh, man, homework. Homework. I want to know what's something you need to learn or do to take the next step forward. Yeah, clarity, right? Figure that out. Clarity, that's yep. it. I mean, it always comes back to that. Yeah. And then so once you figure out what the next thing that you need to do are, I want you to go and find three potential things that you could invest in that will help you get that next thing that you need. So these could be any of the resources that we mentioned, or maybe you find a a different opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, What's on your bookshelf for today? This is a good one. You say that about every single book recommendation. I do. Well, I can't recommend it if it's not good, right? Oh, my Lord. All right. So the book for today, you might have heard about it. It's one of the classics. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And the reason I'm recommending this book today is that this is one that focuses more on mindset and how you think and how successful people think. And in order to make these investments in yourself, a lot of times you got to have some of that personal growth. And what this book is going to do is walk you through a lot of the the strategies. And I think there might be like 16 of them or something like that. But it talks about like masterminding. It talks about, um, you know, getting clear on what you want. And this is just going to be a really good foundational piece for you getting into that right mindset to invest and to grow that business that you want. Yeah. Sorry. Just had to spray the cat again. <laughs> I feel like I need a tally for that, too. <laughs> I know, seriously. How many times every show do you have to spray the cat? So I got a book tally and you, you got a, a tally cat. and a cat tally. Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. So I think you already talked about your blog post, but just to mention again, um, Tom has written a epic blog post, probably could be a book all about um, hiring a coach and the different roles that people can play when you're investing in your business. So you can find that at the show notes, which is tomandariana.com slash six. And I think that is that is a wrap. It's been another great episode with Tom and Ariana, your yeah. hosts and lifestyle builders. And I want you guys to remember, it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next Woo-hoo. time. Bye. Are you frustrated by a lack of momentum in your business? Do you want real-time guidance and support from seasoned entrepreneurs who really care about your results? 
If you're nodding your head or awkwardly shouting yes in public somewhere, then we invite you to join Lifestyle Builders, a mentorship program designed to meet you where you are and give you strategic and custom guidance so you can build the business you need for the life you crave. You can find out more at joinlifestylebuilders.com. Your life, your business, your way. Join Family Entrepreneur Life. Join Family Entrepreneur.